Hello everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia and I'm a second year medical student at King's College London. And here on the Medical Projects YouTube channel, we create content offering our best tips and bits of advice to ensure that you get your dream place at medical school. And I also try and show you what medical school is really like from my own experience. So if you like the sound of that, do make sure you hit that subscribe button and you turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we post. I am going to have to apologize if the lighting changes, the sun is doing all sorts of crazy things. I should be thankful it's out because it makes lockdown a bit more bearable but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> also if you haven't already do make sure to go follow us over on our Instagram. We're very happy to answer any questions you may have and love interacting with you guys so make sure you follow us over there also. Now one of our most popular videos we released on this channel was reasons people are rejected from medical school. It's a really horrible feeling but unfortunately it is something that a lot of us candidates are used to with applying to medical school because 60% of applicants get no offers whatsoever so it's something that is so common and if it does happen to you please don't feel disheartened because it is something that many applicants do experience. But the most important thing is firstly that we learn from our mistakes and also we try and avoid making mistakes and that's why in today's video I'm going to be doing a part two all about reasons I think people are rejected from medical school. If you haven't already do make sure you check out part one so that you can get five other reasons that I think people are rejected from medical school. But without further ado let's get on to five reasons I think people are rejected from medical school part two. Now the first reason I think that people are rejected from medical school is because if they take a gap year they do not reflect on it and use it wisely. Now many people will choose to take a gap year either because they just want to travel or sometimes because they haven't received any offers for medical school. And when this happens you really need to be using your gap year wisely because they are going to be expecting slightly different things from you at interview when you talk about having taken a gap year. And this is because it's a year of opportunity where you can get lots of work experience and you can really improve your application. So using your gap year wisely is so important, be it getting more work experience, you might choose to volunteer abroad and just try and link it back to medicine. So you might say, you know, for example, what I did, I volunteered abroad in Vietnam and that really improved my communication skills and I think this will be really transferable to a career in medicine where we're constantly talking to new people and people from different backgrounds and we need to be able to communicate with them really well. It's never a bad thing to talk about your failures. So you might say, for example, I think last year I didn't get into medical school because I hadn't exposed myself enough to what a career in medicine really entailed. So I made sure to address that in my gap year and I did tons of work experience and I now understand that some positives of the job are this and some downsides to the job are this. They want to see that you've grown from your previous application and so you need to be able to talk about that. Now the next reason I want to talk about is one that is kind of applicable to us being in a global pandemic right now. I hate to bring it up again we're all sick of hearing about coronavirus but the next reason I have for people being rejected from medical school is because they are not flexible enough with their approach to obtaining work experience and they didn't make an effort to obtain work experience during this pandemic. Now it goes without saying that the expectations just are going to be different whilst we're in this weird time in our lives. They're not going to be expecting you to walk onto wards or volunteer at a GP practice or care home like you used to be able to but they're still going to have expected you to find a way to obtain some work experience because you know being resilient and showing commitment are qualities that are essential to being a good doctor. And so what I really think you should be concentrating on is making sure that you're making an effort to obtain some form of work experience. And there are many courses offering online work experience which are an excellent, if not better at times, substitute to real life work experience. And of course, because we're here at Medical Projects, I do want to talk about two incredible work experience opportunities that we offer here. The first one is GP Live, and this is a full day of virtual work experience where we film it in a GP studio and you have access to doctors which are able to guide you through how to take a patient history. And then incredibly, you're given your own opportunity to elicit a full medical history from a patient actor, which is a fantastic opportunity. And it just will really teach you about how to communicate with patients, things we need to discuss when it comes to taking a history. And it's just an incredibly immersive live experience for you to have. If you'd rather hit the wards, we also offer hospital-based virtual work experience called Ward Round Live 
where you'll be guided through clinical scenarios with real NHS doctors. This work experience will give you so much to reflect on and will teach you so many key skills that are important to being a medical student and even a good doctor. So if you really want to kind of stand out from the crowd, I definitely recommend checking it out. My overarching point with this is just make sure you are still obtaining some form of work experience. It's not enough to just say I wasn't able to because of the pandemic because so many people are in this situation. So you need to show that you have some degree of flexibility and aren't going to let things like this pandemic get in the way of you securing your dream spot at medical school. The next reason that I think people are often rejected from medical school is because they don't have an insight into hot topics surrounding the NHS. So what do we mean by hot topics? It's basically things that are commonly discussed with regards to being a doctor and working for the NHS. So things like the junior doctor strike, things like the current pandemic and long waiting times in A&E, an increasingly elderly population. You need to know about highly publicized medical cases such as the Bauer Garber case, the Charles Gard case, Harold Shipman. There's so much you need to know about and it can be a bit overwhelming, but just make sure you know a little bit about quite a few topics. The best way I recommend doing this is keep informed with current medical news. So look at the health section on BBC and make sure you know you're reading the news each week and looking at anything that's relevant. So, you know, the current COVID vaccine might come up in interview. I also highly recommend checking out our webinars. We've published one all about hot topics in the NHS and I highly recommend you check it out. It's free to watch and just gives you a bunch of insight into some key topics that you should be researching about. They're definitely not going to expect you to know absolutely everything. And if you do come across something in an interview which you've never heard about, just be honest about it and tell the examiner. You might say something along the lines of, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with this case, but can you summarize the key details for me? And then I'll offer my opinion. They want you to know about these hot topics because they want you to be able to show them that you're interested in this career and you actually go out of your way on a regular basis to read around this topic and inform yourself with the latest news. The next reason I think that people are rejected from medical school is because they're not a well-rounded individual. And this sounds a little harsh, but bear with me. What I mean by this is it's unfortunately not enough to be, you know, completely academically capable and have an array of A stars and A's because chances are most applicants are going to have that. And being a good doctor is way more than being able to ace an exam. It goes without saying that a career in medicine is very stressful and medical school itself can be very stressful. And what they're looking for is an individual that is able to balance a busy work life and also have a good health healthy social life. So you need to be showing them that you have hobbies and things that you do outside of academia that, you know, relieves your stress levels and just keeps you calm. You might say something about doing some sports you enjoy, some music instruments you play, even something like reading. I think I mentioned in my personal statement about reading being a really great form of escapism from daily life and it's just a really nice way to keep my stress levels low. They want to see that you are going to be able to cope with the demands of being a doctor and the best way you can do that is by showing that you're a well-rounded individual individual and you have so much to offer. It's not something that you're going to want to dwell on too heavily in your personal statement because there are some more important things to talk about but it's definitely something you want to mention and you want to cherry pick some different examples. If you want more information about how to write a good personal statement we've also made a video all about that so do make sure to check it out. Finally the last reason that I think people are rejected from medical school concerns medical school interviews and that is that people don't approach questions with enough balance and and are overly opinionated. So what I mean by this is you're often going to get asked questions in your medical school interview, be it about ethics or, you know, who should get this organ, or you might have to discuss something which has kind of both for and against arguments, and they want to see that you're able to weigh out two sides and come to a conclusion at the end. This is also something that's often seen in medical ethics questions, so do make sure you check out our video all about that if you're a bit unsure about how to approach a medical ethics interview question. It's really important as a doctor that when you're faced with a challenging dilemma, you're able to weigh up two sides and come to a conclusion. So you need to be able to, for example, weigh up the positives and negatives for giving a certain patient a treatment as opposed to a different patient. It's not the best practice if you approach a question with 
with a very strong opinion and neglect to consider other factors. So even if you do think from the get-go, you know, this is what I would choose, you need to approach these questions and say, you know, they're difficult to answer, there are many sides to the story, and I'm going to try and verbalize some of these to you before coming to my conclusion. You would never approach a situation with two patients and completely disregard one patient. So in your interview, make sure that you're constantly acknowledging that there are two sides to every story and you need to present a balanced argument and then reach your decision at the end. So those are five further reasons that I think people are often rejected from medical school. I really hope you found this useful. I've mentioned lots of things for you to check out in this video, so make sure you check the description box for links to GP Live, Ward Round Live, and also any relevant videos that I've mentioned. Again, do make sure if you haven't already, you subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn the notification bell on. Other than that, I wish you guys the best of luck in your own medical school applications. Let us know how you're getting on down in the comments below. We love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!